asked to write a poem about gay pride, and I thought I'd find it easy because it's something I've thought about since I was about 13. But um, I didn't because gay pride is not like uh, any other type of pride because it shouldn't have to exist. It's a counter emotion to being told to feel ashamed. So it's got hurt in it and um, anger in it and sadness in it. It's like every sequin represents the amount of darkness that it's had to overcome, and there's gonna we're gonna need like a fuckload of sequins forever. That's why you need feather boas and rainbows, you know, to uh, counteract all the dark. Um, I was researching this club called The Gateways, which is one of the few places that lesbians could meet safely in London in the 1930s, 40s. And on Wikipedia, the description of it is um, through a green door, down a steep flight of stairs, into a windowless cellar. And I thought it's quite rare that the literal description of a place is also a metaphor for how it would make you feel, both, you know, personally and politically. This is a poem called Dive Bar. Through a red door, down a steep flight of stairs, into a windowless cellar, with sweating walls, an ingenue in a smoking jacket sits astride a piano. As a host of swaying women sing, your secret's safe with me. And one invites you into the privacy of a kiss, all these dark clandestine places. And you find yourself imagining a very tiny woman walking straight into her mouth, through a red door, down a steep flight of throat, into a windowless cell with breathing walls, an ingenue in a smoke jacket sits astride a piano. As a host of swallowed women sing your secrets in a safe, the barmaid shakes a custom cocktail she calls a private kiss all these dark half-eaten faces, and you find yourself imagining a tiny, tiny woman walking straight into her mouth, through a red breath, down a dark thought, into a swallowed sense with shrinking walls, an innuendo in stomach acid, slops a stride piano. As a host of silent passions mouth, your secret is yourself inside the belly of the world, all these dark dissolving spaces, and you find yourself imagining a windowless woman, breaking walls down in herself, sprinting up the shrinking halls, and up contracting corridors, and up the choking bits of hard stairs through dark thoughts and dead doors through the red door as it swallows shut behind you. Now you're spat out on the pavement with the sun just coming out 